Smith Student Activity Center. We're going to get a chance to take a look at them and uh, see how it'll go here tonight. You look at Virginia. Drew Kennedy's been playing super since going into the lineup. Tom Sheehy, Olin Polonese up front. Mel Kennedy, Tom Calloway in the backcourt. Wolf, Martin, Doherty, Ken Smith, James Day, a senior. This senior night at Chapel Hill. And so the seniors, minus, of course, Steve Hale, getting a chance to start. Billy, I mentioned Drew Kennedy. 14-5 and five the Cavaliers are since he went into the starting lineup. Well, he really has the surprise, particularly in his recruitment. They actually went to see somebody else play in the junior college system, came away with Andrew Kennedy. He has played extremely well, and he's fundamentally sound, so he gives them so many things that fit per perfectly in the chemistry at the University of Virginia. Well, we're set to go here in Chapel Hill. Olin Polonese, who has really been playing well of late, to jump center against the big guy for the Tar Heels, Brad Doherty, and Mel Kennedy, and the Cavaliers will have first shot at it. Watch Polonese in the low post. He has developed not only into a great rebounder and defensive player, but now he's one of the best threats offensively in the league in the low post. Mel Kennedy makes his move, puts up the jump shot. Rebounded by senior James Day. That's Kenny Smith checked on the baseline by Tom Calloway. Warren Martin holds it high. That's Joe Wolf. Great man-to-man -man by Virginia. They plays to Doherty. Polonese comes outside to pick him up. That's a 12-foot shot. Day's passing up. Smith had it knocked away. Doherty picked it up and was stripped of the ball. And Tom Sheehy goes down. He took a shot in the side of the head and goes right down. And now being checked over by teammate Polonese and official Larry Lembo. See, he's a tough kid. He might have caught the side of that. I, I, I don't know about the replay, but somebody either got a hand in there. Hopefully it wasn't Sheehy's chin that got in there to deflect that ball. Sheehy's wanting to stay. Well, Terry Holland is going to make him sit down for a moment as John Dislin, a sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee, comes into the Cavalier lineup, and Kenny Smith gets ready to trigger for the Tar Heels. That's a look at a halftime score and a very close first half. Down at Little John, Duke by only three. Joe Wolf. Well, the last time Duke was number one, they went to Little John Coliseum and lost the ball game down there for not going to be easy. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Callaway tried to save it, couldn't do it. Neither team has scored. We are just underway here in Chapel Hill. Kenny Smith, James Day play catch. There's Virginia in the zone on the out of bounds. 2-3 zone with Dislin in the middle. Smith drives by Kennedy and tried to kick it back outside today. And that's going to turn it right back over to the Cavaliers. Now, Marty, there's where chemistry plays a part. Kenny Smith threw that ball basically where Day should have been. And the fact that he wasn't there, it's a little mental mistake on his part. But really, if Day had been cutting towards the open area, he'd have found himself open for about a 15, 16-foot jump shot. Tom Sheehy right back into the Cavalier lineup as Dislin sits down. So Virginia with its second chance to score. They work it low to Polonese to jump hook, and Virginia leads 2-0. And there's Polonese putting Warren Martin right on his back. Now Martin can't let him post up that close to the basket. Now Mr. Polonese with a pretty good day at the office when they played in Charlottesville. 19 points and 10 rebounds. Day loops it off to Smith. He's left open, and we're tied at two apiece. Credit Warren Martin with an excellent screen. 2-2 lockup. James Day with the assist. Kenny Smith with a hoop, and the Cavaliers will bring it up. Look for Kenny Smith to be a little bit more of a scorer with this lineup, knowing that Hale's out of the game, and I think that makes him an extremely difficult player to handle. Drew Kennedy to Callaway. They give him the shot. He refuses to take it. They look again low to Polonese. Nothing there. Sheehy, Callaway again. Martin trying to use that forearm to keep Polonese out of there. And that's Drew Kennedy to give Virginia a 4-2 advantage. North Carolina having dropped two straight conference games. Maryland in overtime one week ago tonight. And, of course, losing at NC State on Sunday afternoon while the Cavaliers have won two in a row. They've really been playing well at a time in the season when all coaches want their club to be playing at peak proficiency. Kenny Smith drives around Callaway, kicks it back out to Martin. He'll take it from 17. He throws up a brick, and the ball picked up by Day. Darty makes his move, puts it up and in. Darty puts Sheehy right on the floor. Now we have Kennedy down. Kenny Smith is limping on his ankle. So things a little bit physical very early here. Kenny Smith limping off the floor to be replaced by freshman Kevin Madden. And Mel Kennedy still down. The second ball in Cavalier we have had in just over two and a half minutes. And on that same play, we had Sheehy on his back on one side and 
Kennedy right on his stomach on the other. So Mel Kennedy will leave, and freshman Richard Morgan, who has been playing like a house of fire of late, comes in. Let's see what happens to Kennedy. Well, at that point, it looks like he must have got hit in the eye. I mean, it wasn't that big a hit. Unless he got scraped with a fingernail, it sure wasn't a, a fist that should have put him down. Two more substitutions for North Carolina, Jeff Lebo and Curtis Hunter. As you take a look at uh, the senior success, and that's been quite a story in itself. These fellas who are playing their final home game for Carolina tonight, and Morgan makes his presence felt right now. And good Virginia athlete. leads by two. Good athlete, good score. Kevin Madden, Curtis Hunter. Gordy, the second ranking score in the Atlantic Coast Conference behind Len Bias, plays to Curtis Hunter. He makes his move and hits that line drive jump shot. North Carolina is throwing the ball cross court, getting real good screens on the weak side. An excellent play against this overplay defense that Virginia's throwing on him. Game is tied, six apiece. 16.45 remaining in the half. Following he's off the to town Callaway. He goes baseline. Lebo stripped him of the ball, but also commits a foul. Lebo's pretty good with the hands down in close. He normally gets away with that block. See Lebo moving the feet. He's going to try to strip the ball right here. He's very, very good with that play. That was very close to a fine block. Kenny Smith back in for North Carolina, so he's all right. Mel Kennedy still reclining on the Cavalier bench. Six Carolina, six Virginia. There's North Carolina in their 1 3 1 zone. Wolf's running the baseline. And Morgan tries his second long range Good. jump shot. He got the ball back. The pass inside deflected away from Polonese, picked up by Madden. That was a great block out by Lebo, putting the body on Polonese so he didn't get the easy rebound. Won't show up in the stat sheet, but those are the little things that win your game. Doherty got open inside in that motion offense for Carolina, but a foul committed before he was in the act of shooting. Let's see who Paul Hausman calls Sheehy. it against. It's going to be against Sheehy, 22. Gonna, looks like a double foul, huh? Yep. So one on Sheehy and one on Joe Wolf. So it'll go to the arrow pointing to the University of North Carolina, alternating possession. Carolina gets it on the inbounds following the double foul, seeking to take the lead. Here's a jump Great. blocked by Polonese, but a foul. Good block with the right hand. They're claiming it. Polonese pushed off with the other. He was right up there on that timing, that shot for Doherty very well. Oh, Doherty ninth in the Atlantic Coast Conference in free throw shooting now, on the line. Watch Polonese use the backboard to gain a little bit of stability. And he looks around and can't believe that he was called <laughs> for the foul. 70.8% free throw shooter Brad Doherty, and he is somewhat long in his first attempt. He'll try again. Between Doherty and Lenny Bias, the stats are just awesome in regard to the league standings. Uh, they're right up there in the top 10 in almost every category with the exception of assists. Well, Bias averaging over 23 points a game, and Doherty is second in the league at 20.2. They've been like machines all season long. Here's a full court pass. Great and catch. a great catch indeed by Mel Kennedy, who's come back off the bench. North Carolina leading by one point, seven to six. Cavalier Sheehy goes baseline. This the reverse, got it back, put it up, no good. He got it back again, and he scores it. Good hustle by Tom Sheehy. The hard hat on the Cavalier front line, Sheehy. Kenny Smith puts up the running one-hander, no good. Good position by Kennedy inside. The Cavaliers bring it up. You can see Virginia trying to break it down court quickly before North Carolina can set up in their defense. One point lead for the Virginia club and also possession. Mal Kennedy taking a look at Polonese goes right by two defenders. This is a shot. Doherty looks for the kick out and does so to Kenny Smith. Cross court to Kevin Mann. In the lane to Wolf. Put it up there. Boy, that was a great down of pass and a good catch by Wolf because the ball was thrown a little bit low. He was able to pick it up on the move. Carolina with their trapping defense causing Callaway a problem. He got rid of it. She he shoots it over Doherty. No good. Joe Wolf had it, lost it out of bounds, North Carolina. Right now, I think Virginia has got to start looking a little bit more inside the Polonies. He's established position early, but he hasn't touched the ball. Well, we've got a timeout called on the floor. It is back and forth here at Dean Smith Student Activity Center. 15.07 to go first half. Tar Heels by one at nine to eight. We'll be back. 
With Billy Packer, Marty Brenneman back at Chapel Hill, where the Tar Heels lead the Cavaliers 9-8. to eight. You probably noticed, if you were with us at the very top, a slightly different look on our telecast tonight due to the fact that the uh, President Reagan had his address to the nation, the resulting time change for this game that was originally scheduled at 8 o'clock. We're glad you're with us, and we understand we have the full complement of the members of our ACC Network family with us right now. Carolina has the ball. Curtis Hunter, Kenny Smith, Jeff Lebo, baseline jump shot. Lebo, I'm sure everybody remembers in the first ball game, 0 for 8. Very uncharacteristic of a young guy that can really shoot the basketball. Misses his first one now. Maybe Virginia is uh, his albatross. Here's a jumper by Callaway at the other end, and he got nothing but net, and Virginia regains a lead at 10-9. Carolina brings it up in a hurry. Kenny Smith thought about it. Guy it off to Wolf. He drew some attention. Bait back to Kenny Smith, and he buries it. As I said at the top, Marty, Kenny Smith will look to score a lot more with this lineup. With Hale no longer available uh, to play for them, in, 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 certainly in this game anyway. Here's Kennedy on the move. His shot rolled off. Joe Wolf got position inside on Tom Sheehy. Carolina looking to extend its lead to three. Smith bounce feeding. Turnaround by Doherty. Oh, and on the other leader. side, it's Mel Kennedy with a quick kick out to Richard Morgan. Again, Virginia just ignoring Polonies completely. Callaway just putting it right over Lebo. But I think if Virginia's going to be effective in this game, they've got to get Polonies in the game offensively. It does a couple of things. One, he's a 20-point-per-game type score. Two, it puts Doherty in a position where he's got to work defensively. Well, it was interesting. Uh, Polonies, not a whole lot of a factor in the game last Saturday against Clemson in Charlottesville in the first half. But, boy, he came alive in the second half. Bodies flying all over the place as three go down. Callaway drives the length of the floor, and he was fouled by Jeff Lebo. And for the freshman, that's his second. Well, there was a foul there on Callaway. I thought the foul probably should have been on Wolf, but Lebo picks up his second. Here comes Callaway, almost turned it over with a high dribble, goes up. And no way that foul's on Lebo. Nope. So Callaway will tie his shoelace and then go to the free throw line as John Johnson enters the Virginia lineup. Chris Johnson, one of those fellows, had an excellent first game. 13 points, 5 assists, only one turnover in the first game against the University of North Carolina. Extremely quick, doesn't mind taking into traffic. And he and Morgan, as a tandem coming off the bench, have just played out of sight baseball the last uh, basketball the last couple of weeks. Free throw is good by Callaway. His fifth point, and it is 13-11 Virginia with 13-22 remaining in the first half. Callaway doesn't mind putting up the shots offensively, and tonight he's being very aggressive. He has six points. Virginia goes to his zone, 1-3-1. One, one. Virginia and Carolina both changing up a lot defensively here in the first almost seven minutes of play. There's a lob inside to Popson, and he couldn't get it to go down. Polonies with a rebound. Credit Andrew Kennedy with excellent positioning there, making it tough on Popson to get the shot off. And Mel Kennedy gets his first field goal, and the Cavaliers have opened up a bit of daylight. They now lead by five at 16-11. And the Natives are restless. That they are. It's been a long time since North Carolina lost three conference games in a row. Popson plays inside. Kevin Mitt. Great screen by Doherty on the inside. Carolina pulls back to within three as the freshman slams one home. It is 16 to 13. Man to man with a lot of trapping now. John Johnson drives. Intercepted by Lebo. A good play. He tipped the ball away. Kept it in play. And now the Tar Heels try to take advantage of the good defensive work by the freshman. Inside Doherty. Double team. Kicks it back to Ben. Lebo straight away. He's still looking for his first Virginia field goal. He can't believe it himself. That's 0 for 10. It remains 16-13. Callaway has been hot. But Polonese is wide open, and they're just not getting him the ball. Smith plays it inside. Doherty's jump hook. John Johnson rebounds for the Cavaliers. Puts a stutter step on Kenny Smith. Has the ball knocked away. And Kenny knocks it away again from Polonese. Two on one. Lebo over Callaway on a charge. And that's the third against Jeff Lebo. And I don't believe... Let's see about the basket. So... Good dump 
tip off pass by Kenny Smith, but great play by Callaway to go over and establish position. So North Carolina shorthanded to begin with due to the absence of Steve Hale now with Lebo with three. Timeout, and we'll be back after this from Natural Light. Virginia leading 16 to 13 as we remind you the announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception of this broadcast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. With Jeff Lebo sporting three fouls and sitting on the Tar Heel bench, Ranzino Smith has replaced him on the Tar Heel back line as you look at the early field goal percentages. Holden Polonies pinned to the baseline. Morgan, he threw a rocket shot right by Drew Kennedy. And what had happened, Drew Kennedy was wide open because Madden had fallen to the floor. Morgan's just a little over anxious. So all he had to do is slide that one in there. That's the fourth Virginia turnover. The Tar Heels have not been able to convert any of those previous three into points. And Geno Smith is a shooter. Richard Morgan knows that he's all over him. Now Kevin Madden delivers it to Kenny Smith. Right back to Smith. He's open. He's shooting. And he hits it. He doesn't mind putting it up. 16 to 15 as the Tar Heels come back to trail by one. Could give North Carolina a big lift in this game. With Hale out of there, Lebo in foul trouble. Colonies to Morgan, and that's John Johnson. Holden setting up inside. He turns on Wolf, puts up the jump shot. Now, I, I think at that last time out, Terry Holland had to tell his ball club, hey, let's not forget number 24. He brought us here, and let's uh, make sure that he gets an opportunity to handle the ball. 18-15, Virginia. Kenny Smith to Joe Wolf, who saved it at the baseline, and now Kenny Smith will bring it back outside. Ranzino Smith in his last shot. He'll throw up another one and throw up a, a long one. Tried to avoid the block on that shot. So many young players try to do that. If you're going to put up your shot, don't mind getting it blocked. When you try to alter it, as he did right there, you normally throw up a bad one. We have reached the midway point of the first half, and the Cavaliers lead by three. A whistle away from the basketball. Paul Hausman spots an infraction. Looks like he's... And he got somebody from North Carolina, Joe yeah. Wolf. I think it's going to be Joe Wolf. Both players are number 24. Let's see if he's calling Polonese for backing in or calling Wolf for getting back in. It's right. going to be on Polonese. And that'll be his second personal foul. They got him as 50% of the double foul earlier. Now, Terry Allen doesn't understand what they're calling because, nor does Polonese. He thought the foul was the other way. But they're both number 24. Polonese can't believe it. He turned to Paul Hausman and said, that foul was on me. Hausman said, yes. So two on Polonese. That's something that Terry Holland's got to keep a close eye out for. Well, what happens when your big man inside doesn't get the ball? He starts trying to clear people out to get a little bit more room. Kenny Smith plays to Wolf. He goes inside and nothing doing there for Steve Bucknell, but he was fouled apparently by Tom Sheehy, and that's his second. Game's being called very tight in regard to the touch fouls. Some pass on the inside to Bucknell. There's Sheehy. And as I said, really touch fouls. He might have got him a little bit with the body. 14 fouls against Virginia. The Tar Heels have been charged with four, three against Jeff Lebo. 18 to 15. Cavs have the lead. 9.40 on the clock. First half from Chapel Hill. Bucknell hasn't gotten much playing time. Not he a forced pass. the pass inside, and it goes to Virginia. He really hadn't had that much playing time. It's kind of tough to be thrown in the middle of the... Uh, pack right here but he's a fellow that I'm sure before he gets out of here is going to be a fine player very highly recruited up the floor comes John Johnson Virginia has led by as many as five the difference right now is three Johnson goes baseline runs into a victory in Brad Gordy and gets it off to Polonese he spins to the end line and hit the jump shot he has really developed that jumper. Nice, soft touch. Dean Smith felt like an offensive foul should have been whistled on Polonese, but no whistle, and the Cavaliers have equal their biggest lead. It's 2015. Now, you don't want to go right to one guy, but be good to get Doherty the ball as much as possible on Polonese now with Polonese having two fouls. And Polonese is pumped up right now. Of course, an emotional kid to begin with. Ranzino Smith, his second field goal. Well, of course, with Hale out, 
And with Lebo on the bench with three, as Billy pointed out a moment ago, they could use a big lift tonight from Ranzino Smith. And he's come off the bench to get two quick ones for him. And Mel Kennedy answers at the other end. Great job by Johnson. He recognized that he was going to be double teamed on the trap. Pulled the ball back out. That opened up a passing lane right to the center. Good play by Virginia. 22-17. Buckle. Dean Smith went to him early in the game at Reynolds Coliseum on Sunday. There's Kenny Smith hitting his third field goal. And again, it's expanding on what you mentioned earlier, Billy. He's got to look for the shot more. He'll be looking for it, and you've got to give North Carolina's game plan a lot of credit. They know that Virginia's getting a lot of weak side defensive help, so they're throwing the ball cross court against them. Jumper by Richard Morgan. He throws up an air ball. Ranzino Smith unable to save it. And Carolina ball. Tom Sheehy jumped in there trying to get it for his club, and he was laying on the end line. Very, very physical basketball here in Chapel Hill. Timeout. 7.56 to go in the first half, and the score, Virginia 22, Carolina 19. Cavaliers lead by three. Billy, a look at Olden Polonies from earlier in the game. Well, he gets pinned in the corner, makes a nice fake with the ball in the shoulders, gets Doherty to turn the other way, and there's that soft jumper he's developed uh, 12 feet from the basket. Now, Terry Holland said before the game tonight he has never played at the level of consistency with which he has played of late. He's had two great games back-to-back, -back, 27 and 21, against State and Clemson, respectively, and that's a point we touched on earlier tonight, how the Cavaliers just dominated the Tar Heels on the boards in that first meeting, 86-73. The Cavs won it on January 30th. There's a diamond and one being played on Kenny Smith. There are four fellas playing in the shape of a diamond of his own. And you have Callaway chasing Kenny Smith around. Ranzino Smith, he threw it right behind the breaking Kevin Mann. Looks for Ran Ranzino Smith to get off a jump shot on the wings. Up, turns it over. He sure does, an open field. Cavaliers have John Dislin back in the lineup. Richard Morgan, Mel Kennedy, Olden Polonese is coming back now. He was on the bench for just a brief spell. And Tom Sheehy appears to be shaken up for the second time tonight. And he's uh, holding an area around the groin area, which could be. Well, when he dove for that ball uh, a couple of plays ago down on the end line, he landed right on his thigh. Second half, the Blue Devils have extended their lead to seven. Polonese. There's that shot. 10 to 12 foot range. Virginia can feast on that here in this first half. There's Kevin Madden open. Long rebound controlled by Richard Morgan. Five point Virginia lead as the Cavaliers have it with seven minutes remaining in the half. Callaway goes baseline. Kicks Still it off to fast. Dislin and he banks it up too strong. Again, bodies go all over the place as Dislin goes down as well as two Tar Heels. Ranzino Smith is all right. He bounces up and Kevin Madden a little bit slow getting off the wood. This is quite a pass by Callaway inside. Dislin didn't pick up the slack. He could have been right under the basket because he had nobody guarding him. You can see he charged on the play. This game's starting to get real physical inside. Nothing easy. Well, the Cavaliers would love to make it two straight over the Tar Heels. And Billy pointed up earlier how long it's been. It's been since 1964, believe it or not that a North Carolina team has lost three straight conference games. Doherty missed the shot, but he'll have a redeemer as Dislin picks up his second. Just as was the case for Dislin down on the other end of the court, Doherty found himself a little bit farther away from the basket than he would have hoped. That one more step and he's got a dunk. That time he came up a little short on the dunk. You'll see it right here. One more step in on the catch. Puts Doherty in a position to go right up for the dunk, but you can see that he needed one half more step to get on in there. He has not been heard from a whole lot here in the first half. That is only Brad Doherty's fourth point. Well, he's the number one field goal percentage shooter in the conference. Number two rebounder in the conference. Number two scorer in the conference. That's had quite a year. He hits them both. Tar Heels again pull to within three points at 24-21 as uh, Terry Holland makes a substitution. Drew Kennedy replaces John Dislin. Tar Heels pick him up in the backcourt. There's a trap on the inbounds pass. Quickly intended for Drew Kennedy, but Ranzino Smith knocked it out of bounds. Well, Virginia was in rough shape with Morgan back there holding the ball. They'd like to have it in Callaway's hands if they're going to be pressured. And, and North Carolina put all of their players up there to be in that trapping situation, so Virginia had to go long. 
Brad Doherty. And Virginia will inbounds. Both teams have started to pick up now from a shooting standpoint. They were slow at the beginning, but the Cavaliers 11 out of 20, and the Tar Heels 9 of 20 from the floor. There's the trap. Colonies had Doherty right on his back. Still has him there. Galloway swings it over to Mel Kennedy. He looks inside, puts it on the floor as he goes baseline and throws up an air ball. Joe Wolf to Kenny Smith. Galloway and Morgan are back for the Cavaliers. Kenny pulls it out to Ranzino Smith. Joe Wolf. Kevin Madden, inside jumper, no good. Tip oh. in by Joe Wolf. Joe Wolf was just trying to get his hands on that ball. That was a good delayed break by North Carolina as Kenny Smith took it out to the corner. They do that extremely well. 24-23, the Tar Heels again to within one. They've now been able to get over the hump, and Larry Limbo finally gets the attention of everyone involved. Ranzino Smith fouled Tom Calloway on that jumper. We see the play down on the other end. Drive to the basket. Joe Wolf realized the ball's going behind him, just reaches his hand up, gets a piece, and it goes right in. And there was the foul on the elbow. Good call by the official. Tar Heels were thinking a chance to take the lead. Larry Limbo's whistle could not be heard by anybody. He blew it long enough, and finally everything stopped, and Callaway shoots a pair. And that was an excellent call. They shouldn't be booing him on that one. Callaway only a 70% free throw shooter, and very unusual for a fellow that's your point guard. He has more turnovers than assists. Now, you really don't want that. No. It gets you in a lot of trouble. 40 assists on the year and 48 turnovers. 26-23, Cavaliers, 5-40, first half, time remaining. And they stay in that diamond and one defense with Callaway on Smith. Madden got in the air, played it off to Ranzino Smith. Tip up, no good. Joe Wolf tried, couldn't get it. Instead, it goes to Drew Kennedy and now to Tom Callaway. He's had a fine first half. And the Cavaliers have led for most of this first half. Traveling called, Mel Kennedy. That's a big break for North Carolina because Doherty had put his shoulders right on into Polonese and pushed him about 10 feet out of the post area. 26-23. Ranzino spent a lot of playing time here in the first half due to the fact Jeff Lebo picked up three quick fouls. And you can see what Terry Holland's doing defensively. It's a good shot by Wolf. He has packed that, that diamond defense all the way inside the foul line. He's going to force North Carolina to prove they can hit some jumpers. Well, the Tar Heels certainly have had next to no success at all getting the ball inside to Brad Doherty. Their defense picks up the tempo now, but Olden Polony settles him down as he gets his fifth field goal and his tenth first half point. Virginia again by three. Joe Wolf from 15. In and out, no good. Cavaliers rebound. Let's see if Virginia starts getting the message that the man Polony is having a big half. They've got to get him the ball. He's done it very, very quietly. Uh-oh. If ever there was an offensive foul, that was it, and that's his third. Polonese trying to get too aggressive. He's not in good position here to take Doherty. He's just going to push him off with his arm. No question about nope. the foul. Not at all. Doherty does a good acting job, but there was plenty of contact on Polonese's part. Good call. So five for five from the field, three rebounds, and those numbers sit down on the Cavalier bench as John Dislin, who picked up two fouls in free playing time earlier, comes back in. Eight Cavalier turnovers. Wolf, double team, in a heap of trouble, and could Close not find away. somebody to get it to, but apparently it went off the Cavalier. I didn't see it. But I didn't see that either. <laughs> I think if you see a replay on that, Wolf is going to throw that ball right against the stanchion. That man there couldn't see it either. All right, let's see it. Let's see this play. He threw that ball right off the stanchion. <laughs> Kenny Smith inbounds. Now, Virginia has this defense. I think for fans that really like basketball, it's interesting to see where Terry Holland has that defense. Backed all in the blue. There's Doherty. The second field goal as he cut into the lane, got that good pass and hit the jump shot. 28-27. Carolina's been here a number of times in the first half. That being only one down, but every time the Cavaliers have answered at the other end, and this time, no exception. See, he gets hurt, pulls the muscle in his 
Back of his leg, it looks like. This is a real good break of the double team. Sheehy gets it inside, protects the ball extremely well against Doherty, keeps his head up on the shot. Looks like he wants to stay in there. Sheehy's had a bang-up night, boy. He's been down on the floor three or four times. And injured three different times and still hanging in as he goes to the line trying to complete a three-point play. That foul, by the way, was on Brad Doherty. That's his first. And now Kevin Madden will replace Ranzino Smith for North Carolina. And see, he's an 85% free throw shooter, so Terry Holland doesn't want to take him out while he's on the line. But obviously he can stick somebody up there ready to substitute for him if he can hit these. Derek Sims, first action he has seen tonight for Virginia, replacing Tom Calloway. And it's like, looks like he's going to predict... For, uh, replace Dislin and have a real small lineup out there. They see some pressure coming from Virginia. They're gonna. Sims has really given him a pick me up lately defensively and coming off the Cavalier bench. He gets his fifth point and uh, a timeout with 3:41 to go in the half. Virginia's led most of the way and right now on a four-point lead at 31 to 27. Don't forget at the conclusion of tonight's game, join us as we'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. 31-27, the Virginia Cavaliers lead the North Carolina Tar Heels in a game that Billy Terry Holland said, without any question, the first game was our best game, and he said we have to play at an, uh, an intensity and at a performance level equal to that. They have not been forced to do that, yet they maintain the lead almost throughout. I think their intensity level has been very good. It, they have made some mistakes in, in regard to the passes that they've been trying to throw. But here they are back in that uh, diamond in one. Kenny Smith being hounded now by Sims. Olin Polonich on the bench with three fouls. Jeff Lebo on the bench with three fouls for the Tar Heels. Kevin Madden shoots it. And Drew Kennedy rebounds. Those shots are there. 15-foot jumpers from the wings. Virginia's going to make North Carolina prove they can make some of them. So far, the Tar Heels have not been able to make the percentage of those shots. The jumper by Mel Kennedy just a tad short. And Kenny Smith climbs the ladder for the rebound. Inside, Kevin Madden put it up and scored. Great pass by Kenny Smith. Right on the money. Madden really an explosive scorer on the inside. 31 to 29. 2.40 to go, first half. Tom Sheehy checked an open court by Brad Doherty. It goes to the corner in Callaway to Derek Sims. Baseline drive, Callaway puts it up, no good. Tip fails. Ball slapped outside, and there's Mel Kennedy. And you can see without Polonies on the inside to give him some scoring help, he's going to have some problems getting points on the board. Good defense by Matt. would like the ball back. Brad Doherty shooting for the tie. Hit the shot, but a whistle sounded just before Doherty went airborne. Offensive foul against the Tar Heels. Against Curtis Hunter trying to drive on into that pack. Now he has to realize that Virginia playing that diamond in one, there's not going to be any room to penetrate straight on the cross. We invite you to stay tuned at halftime. We'll have details on how to enter Pepsi Super Fan Contest and win a trip to next year's ACC Tournament. That's coming up at halftime, and we'll also be visiting with the North Carolina team physician, Dr. Joseph DeWalt, to discuss one Steve Hale and uh, a collapsed or partially collapsed lung and the things that would pertain to that injury in terms of how long it takes to come back from it. You might also ask him about Warren Martin. I thought Martin's finger was what was giving him trouble, but he's looking like his legs are giving him problems tonight. He just seems to be in a lot of pain. Drew Kennedy shooting it up and in. Well, Martin's suffering a sprained foot against the University of Maryland last uh, Thursday night. As you take a look at one of the Carolina big men at the moment sitting on the bench. UVA has yet to miss a free throw. And it continues at perfection as Drew Kennedy hits both of them. And it's now 33-29 Cavaliers. And they are not a real good free throw shooting team, shooting only 67%. That's seventh best in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Steve Bucknell back in for the Tar Heels. Ranzino Smith, one dribble to Bucknell. He'll put up the jump shot. Tar Heels continue to get the shot you're talking about, yeah, Billy. It's, it's there, and you just have to make 15-foot uh, jumpers when you're wide open. Well, with only 
a minute 46 to go in the half. Virginia looking to have a lead going into the dressing room at halftime. Is that man-to-man -man by North Carolina? They've been effective double teaming. Tom Sheehy, baseline hook shot in and out. Rebounded by Wolf in heavy traffic. He clears and plays to Kenny Smith. There's a steal by Sheehy. He doesn't realize the man's behind him. And knocked out of bounds. That man behind him got the job done and goes careening back up into the seats in Ranzino Smith. Sheehy realized he, he had Kenny Smith on one side, but he didn't know Ranzino Smith was coming from behind. Dave Popson checks back in for the Tar Heels. Curtis Hunter. Here comes the double teams again. Here's Derek Sims putting it up over Doherty. A mismatch. She follows and lays it in. She came all the way across the lane to get that one. Six-point lead for the Cavaliers, their biggest. Dave Popson with a jump hook. Tough shot. He gets his own missed shot back, shoots it up, and in. Popson's been working on that half hook. But it's a very difficult shot to make with consistency. 35, 31, 50 on the game clock, 41 on the shot clock. Carolina trying to force a turnover and get it back. Bank shot too strong. Rebounded by Ranzino Smith. Sheehy was pushed from behind all the way under the basket. He seems to be very tired right now. Popson got loose inside. A good pass by Ranzino Smith. And what the problem was is that was Sheehy's position in the zone. But he's so tired, he couldn't get down court. 35-33. Tar Heels with four unanswered points. And Virginia wants one last shot. Drew Kennedy puts up the 15-footer, and he hit it. He got it a little earlier than Jerry Holland would have liked. But see, now see he's right under the basket. He just couldn't get down court in time. Ranzino Smith, a long jump shot. Too long. Followed by Curtis Hunter. He throws it up. No good. And the horn sounds. Very physical, very interesting. First half of basketball here in Chapel Hill. Virginia took the lead early in the game. And despite numerous runs by the Tar Heels, they now go to the dressing room at the break with a lead of 37-33. We'll be back. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Holly Farms players of the game to be announced near the conclusion of our broadcast. Taking a look at the halftime statistics, Billy Packer, uh, UVA has shot well, and, uh, well, they have a lead of four. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Their stats are actually more dominating than they were in the first game. 51%. Uh, North Carolina doesn't allow many teams to shoot 51%. Virginia, not a good free-throw shooting team on the year, but shooting seven for seven, you can't beat that. You can see that they're out-rebounding North Carolina, and they have the, a little bit of an edge on the turnovers and the fact they've uh, turned over nine to North Carolina's six. All in all, a pretty good first half for Virginia. North Carolina struggling to find out where are they going to get the points. We're going to take a look at the Atlantic Coast Conference standings, uh, the way they were structured prior to tonight's play. Uh, you see the two clubs involved here, and uh, it's really a battle of jockeying for positions right now, Billy, as far as the final regular season standings are concerned. Yeah, not only for the standings in the conference, but those three top teams right there, Duke, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina, I think are also jockey, jockeying for major seated positions in the NCAA tournament. There's a top 20, the AP uh, top 10 uh, among of the top 20, and you can see those three teams, Duke 1, uh, North Carolina 3, Georgia Tech 4. We were talking earlier tonight before the telecast about the clubs that are going to be seated number one in regional. Well, I think you can look at one through seven. I would say any one of those seven teams still have a shot possibly at being seated number one in a region. Uh, obviously, the top four teams right there, in my mind, if the, if the season were to end right now, those are the four teams that would get the top seeds. Three of those being uh, teams from the ACC, meaning that somebody has got to move. You know, somebody's going to be in the east, somebody probably in the southeast region, and I think the other club will go all the way out to the west. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen the rest of the way in regard to what happens NCAA tournament time. Well, the way things are right now, when you uh, when you try to assess it as they apply to tonight, uh, it would appear that North Carolina, uh, barring uh, a big uh, comeback and a win tonight and going to Durham and beating Duke on Sunday, which would give them the regular season championship, uh, they right now would appear to be the club more likely to be sent out west. 
Well, I think North Carolina also is, has a chance, really, in regard to history, a negative for them in the fact that it's been 20 years since Dean Smith has had a team. And, and, and in my mind, Marty, of all the things that Dean Smith has accomplished as a coach, the most impressive stat to me is being first or second in the Atlantic Coast Conference for 19 or 20 straight years. You're talking about something where a league that has been very, very good over that period of time, never having a year where you just went down a little bit. That, that's almost hard for me to conceive. If they were to lose tonight, you know, that, that puts them in right. real bad shape. And, of course, they can still get knocked out of there in regard to what could happen to them Saturday over at Duke. So we may be seeing a little bit of uh, ACC history taking place. And it's, it seems somewhat ironic that after being ranked number one in the nation for 13 consecutive weeks, they are in the final week of regular season play where, uh, with respect to what you're talking about, they have to get it done. That's right. They could be struggling and, and end up in third place in their own league when they've been in first place in the entire nation for more weeks than any other ball club. Does it say something about this conference? I would have to say so. <laughs> well, there's a man who hopes his club can rally in the second half, 37-33, Virginia. The Tar Heels will open the second half with Brad Doherty, Joe Wolf, Kenny Smith, Curtis Hunter, and Jeff Lebo, who has three personal fouls, while the Virginia Cavaliers go with Tom Calloway. Drew Kennedy, Mel Kennedy, Tom Sheehy, and Olden Polonese, who also has three personal fouls. So that's something to watch out for. I would say this in regard to Polonese, Virginia has got to get about 15 min minutes out of him here in the second half. If he it is. pick up a foul early, Virginia would be in some serious trouble. Cavalier ball. Mel Kennedy, Tom Calloway. North Carolina picking up pretty high. When you pick up that high, that should leave the post open. Polonese kicks it off to Kennedy. Kenny Smith tried to get a hand in, but couldn't do it in time. Now they play low. Polonese stripped to the ball by Curtis Hunter. He wants to go all the way with it, and he won't. He missed a layup, and Callaway rebounded, and he was fouled. Curtis Hunter got fouled, going in there by Kennedy, got pushed by the forearm, knocked him off stride, and prevented him from being able to lay this up. You see Kennedy get a little push on him. Curtis Hunter did not Curtis keep his head up on the basket. When you're going in for a layup like that, you've got to keep your head up so you keep an eye on that basket. He was looking straight ahead. Almost a 77% free throw shooter. So Carolina looking to draw first blood here in the second half, and he misses long. Curtis Hunter is one of those players that uh, came in very heralded. Uh, had a great high school career, and has, due to injuries and other things, has really never gotten in stride as a ball player what was really expected by a lot of people. He's a fourth year junior and he misses both shots. So Carolina had a chance to cut it to two. They come up empty handed and it's Cavaliers going the other way with it. Wolf on Polonese inside. Polonese trying to get free. Wolf's doing a good job with the body. Now they switch off. Doherty picks up Polonese and there's another Carolina steal. So the Cavaliers have turned it over two straight times down the floor. The first time, North Carolina got nothing. This time, they got a pair, and Hunter gets it. And on top of that, he's fouled. I think they're going to call the foul. Foul before the shot. Let's see about the goal. Yep, before the shot. So take away the basket. Virginia maintains its lead of four, and the Tar Heels will inbounds on the second team foul against the Cavs here in the second half. Kenny Smith out of the right pocket. Got it. Good screen that time by Curtis Hunter. Eight points for Kenny Smith. He's a high man now for the Tar Heels. Brad Doherty has scored seven. 37-35. Hunter tried, couldn't get there in time. You notice when Polonese steps out this high, he'll then pass off and then roll back into the low post. There he is. Turnaround jump for Polonese. Boy, I'll tell you, he's got that shot down pat. Good concept by Terry Holland. It brings the defense out, allows him to pass off and then roll to the hoop. Jeff Lebo plays to Wolf. The jump hook. Left handed hook. And was that a nope. Carolina ball. Looked like it might have gone off Wolf, but he jerked his hand back in time. Now watch how Polonese brings his man outside. Then drops right back down into the low post. Gets position. Doherty relaxes the second, and it's too late. Brad Doherty foul. Mel Kennedy got him. Todd Frame blew that whistle very, very quickly. And Doherty will... Well, let's see if they'll put him on the free throw line. Apparently not. Carolina will keep it. Two quick fouls on Kennedy. 
backing it back inside. And they go back to that diamond in one deep. Joe Wolf. That's a shot that North Carolina was unable to hit with any consistency at all in the first half. Wolf, a very good shooter. Has excellent technique. Here comes the trap. Virginia saw it, but she he throws it away. One of the things when you're being trapped, you've got to keep your dribble alive. When you catch the ball, hold it. Don't put it on the floor. That way you can always bust through the double team with your dribble if nobody's open. Tar Heels looking to tie. It is Lebo firing. It's even. That's his first basket against the Virginia club. 39-39. Lebo was over 10 up to that point over the year. Holden Polonies to Mel Kennedy. He starts in, throws up a prayer, and he was fouled. Paul Hausman called the block. He was going to be on Kenny Smith coming over the weak side, trying to help out. Didn't get there in time. Smart move by Kennedy to put the shot up. See Kenny Smith coming over, hitting the bump. They're going to put Kennedy on the line. Well, the fans don't like the call. They thought the foul came before Kennedy was in the act of shooting. It certainly came before Kennedy released the ball, but he was going up for a shot. How far you want to stretch the imagination. <laughs> The first miss from the free throw line for Virginia. They've only had two points here in the second half. That gives the Cavaliers a one-point lead, and Virginia calls a timeout. It was portended to be a good one. It has been exactly that. 17-33 remaining. Virginia 40. Carolina 39. We hope you're enjoying this one from Chapel Hill. We certainly are. Virginia by one, but it's Tar Heel basketball. Following the timeout, Brad Doherty has it knocked away by Polonese. Kenny Smith and Polonese number four. Well, That's a big one. Terry Holland will think about this when he sees this game on the replay. He changed his defense. He came out with a trap. Polonese with three fouls on him. Tries to go after the ball. The quickness of Kenny Smith gets there first. Polonese picks up his fourth. And as I said at the start of this second half, Virginia would have to get 15 minutes out of Polonese to stay in this ball game. Here he picks up his fourth foul in less than three minutes in the second half. And from a team perspective, that is already four fouls against the Cavaliers. John Dislin has replaced Polonese. And Doherty misses inside. Wolf follows and got it. And this one is no colonies, obviously, and you can see North Carolina goes right inside. 41-40 Tar Heels. Here's a foul on Curtis Hunter. Curtis Hunter doing a pretty good job overplaying. Kennedy coming out well for the ball. One of the what made this work for Virginia was a good job by Kennedy to go towards the ball. You see so many fellas when the when the ball is passed to them, they stand and wait for the ball to come to them. Allows the defense to get in between. Well, Virginia finds itself on the short end. Offensive foul. Tom Callaway, the trap pays off for the Tar Heel. What did he say about getting a ball when you're going to be trapped? Make sure you keep your dribble alive. Don't use it if you don't have to. So you have something left to get away from the defenders. Callaway had used up his dribble. Had nothing to do but try to penetrate past and pick up the charge. Well, things are coming apart a little bit for the men of Terry Hollow. North Carolina, I don't think they've had a three-point lead all night long. Right now, up by one, Kenny Smith, Doherty, turning, shooting, rolled off. He was fouled. Was it Dislin or Callaway? John Dislin, his third. Terry Holland is probably, Marty, going to have to go to some type of a zone because if he stays man-to-man, -man, North Carolina is going to keep punching the ball inside to Doherty. Well, he's visiting with his brain trust right now, Dave Odom and Jim Laranega. But you can expect them to change their defense. They're probably also wondering if they can go with a smaller lineup, possibly, because they know that Dislin has uh, no opportunity to stop Doherty by himself. Eight-point night for Brad Doherty. He is four out of five from the free-throw line after missing his first attempt of the night. And the other thing that coaching staff will have to decide, how far down can they go before they bring Polonies back in and take the chance? 43-40. Tar Heels lead the Cavaliers. 
Polonese on the bench with four fouls, and North Carolina has taken advantage of it very quickly. Kennedy to Sheehy breaking down the lane. He didn't get the roll. Terry Holland is screaming, goal, Sam. Doherty, yes. Uh, there was a case, a great play by Doherty. Gislin was in perfect position to take the charge and didn't do it. Timeout call. The Cavaliers make the call with 16 minutes and six seconds remaining, and the Tar Heel performance on the floor has got the crowd back in it. We'll be back after this from Bud. Billy Packer, the sequence of plays that led to the Carolina five-point lead. That's a good pass inside. Sheehy's shot is going to roll around. Wolf almost got a hand on it while it was up there. And here's the case when Doherty drove from almost the top of the key right on by everybody for the layup. Gislin is not a shot blocker. He should have been moving his feet to try to draw the charge on Doherty. Here you can see what Terry Holland did. He can't go any longer. He's put Polonese back in the game. Look for him with Polonese back in the game to be in the zone. Do you agree with this move? Yeah, I think you've got to do it. The game's getting away from him. Carolina really aggressive now on defense. Richard Morgan, John Johnson, Virginia down five. Smart move by Johnson to pull it back out. There's Polonese fumbling, recovering, shooting, and hitting. Boy, his follow-through is so good inside. Now, let's watch the defense. They've got to protect Polonese somehow. They go into that little diamond-in-one defense. Johnson playing Smith. Polonese right underneath the basket. 45-42, Tar Heels leading. Kevin Med looks inside, gives to Doherty, who comes out to meet the pass. Now Lebo and a Wolf and a Tar Heel score. Now Wolf showed us the left-handed half hook before. Hits the second try. 12 points for the junior from Kohler, Wisconsin. Carolina again up 5, 47-42. Now Kennedy double pumps and knocks it in off the glass. A good move by Kennedy. There's Joe Wolf open. A little bit long that time. Now Kennedy rebounds, knocks Wolf down, no whistle. Excellent no call by Yes, sir. Excellent no call. Baseline jumper by Richard Morgan. That's a good piece of officiating because what you had there is no advantage created whatsoever on that contact. So Carolina sees Virginia score four unanswered points. And we have a one-point game, something that we've grown accustomed to tonight. Lebo trying to get it inside to Wolf. Good defensive play by Morgan. He bounced it off Wolf as it was going out of bounds. I think a great piece of coaching here by Terry Holland also to go ahead and make the move that he had to make, even though there was 15 minutes or so to go on the clock. North Carolina was making their move to open up a nice margin. Cavaliers trying to get the advantage back with 14-10 remaining in the game. See, he turns on Wolf, cross courts to Morgan, and lets it fly. A little bit long. Probably not the shot Terry Hahn wanted under that circumstance. Not a bad idea for Carolina to go inside, make Polonese play Wolf for Doherty. Try to get that fifth ball on him. Polonese running Doherty inside. Carolina gets a perimeter jumper from Jeff Lebo, his second field goal here in the second half. Now Jeff Lebo, just a freshman, probably saying, hey, there's no jinx in Virginia. He's two in a row after missing 10. 49-46. Here's Morgan. Nice pass to Sheehy. Wolf's there to play, but Tom gets it anyway. Well, the shooting slump of late, Tom Sheehy, but is shooting well for the second straight game. Here's Lebo faking, getting a little bit closer, put it up and score. Lebo on a tear. That's three in a row. 51-48, North Carolina. Tar Heels 5, 8 out of 11 here in the second half. Virginia's gotten it up only seven times with five hits. Make it five out of eight. Kenny Smith to the breaking Lebo. He blew the layup. Yeah, he saw Polonese coming. Polonese did the smart thing, didn't go for the block. John Johnson tries to take it inside and does to Sheehy, and he puts it in. Good job by Virginia to challenge right back after they were had the fast break going against them. Boy, the offensive tempo has really picked up here in the second half. Some guys are getting tired out there now. Sheehy's very tired. He's gasping for air right now. Look at him bending over trying to get a breath. 
Lebo plays inside Doherty, and there's a push. Now that's going to be a two-shot foul. See, he was just so tired, he could not get there to play. Now she is going to get thrown out of the game. He is going to get thrown out of the game. And today. here they go. The officials trying to get in there and stave off what could be a nasty situation. Sheehy actually should be dismissed from the game right now. Billy, I'll tell you, that might be so, but it looked like he was trying to make up to Doherty after the initial contact, and that's when Doherty pushed him away. Well, when Sheehy threw the ball and hit Wolf in the back of the head with it, he's got to sit down. And what precipitated it all, in my estimation, was the fact that Sheehy was so tired he could not defend. He just was gasp gasping for air. Dean Smith cannot believe it. Well, they've got both coaches over there in front of the North Carolina bench. Larry Limbo holding court with Dean Smith, as you see, and, and Dean really upset. Oh. Jerry Holland just standing passively and listening. Now, Dean, what I, I believe they're talking about right now is Doherty's basket. That basket's got to count. Yeah, and, and it looks to me like the official said the basket did not count. I thought it should be an intentional foul, basket counts, and two shots. I tell you, Smith is hot. He called Tom Frame over, who now confers with Paul Hausman. And the conversations continue. Now, Frame leaves Hausman. He walks over. And they have not scored the basket as yet. But if we get a chance to see the replay, I think you'll see that Darty was without question in the act of shooting when, uh, when she, he fouled him. Yeah, Tom she, he was bending over trying to get his breath. And what happened, the ball went right by him, and he, he just had nothing else he could do but grab Doherty. The shot went in. Dean Smith's still hot about it. This is the kind of time when you wonder why officials aren't allowed to use the replay. Absolutely. It'd be a perfect play for them to be able to see exactly what happened. Well, they've got an old-fashioned football huddle over there right now. They've got Terry Holland. You've got Dean Smith. You've got Bill Guthridge, one of Dean's assistant with Limbo and Frame, and and now Dean Smith pushes Guthridge out of the picture. Well, I think that's right. It should be a head coach's situation. Now the officials can't seem to be straight as to what to call in. They're having trouble sorting it all out. It started with a pass inside to Doherty. He scored as he was pushed by Sheehy, and it really appeared that Sheehy was trying to make up. He kind of affectionately patted Doherty, at which point Doherty pushed him. We'll get a chance to take a look at it. Okay, going to see the play on the inside. There's Sheehy. He is so tired. Right there, he grabs Doherty. Has got to be a basket. Watch. He was it, trying to make up, and it, that's when Doherty pushed him. I understand that, but Doherty can't possibly know that he's trying to make up at that point. Now, she, he got pushed off. He's mad about it. Right from that point, he grabbed the ball. Happened to hit Wolf in the back of the head when he threw the ball at him. Well, we're still talking about it. And they have still not yet registered the basket. The question is, obviously, uh, that's the point of the argument at the moment. I wonder if we have the play not up tight, but the actual play and the officials could really be helped to see exactly what happened on the shot. Well, apparently they made a decision. Uh, Dean Smith would seem to be placated because he's huddling with his club, and Terry Holland is still confronting Tom Frame as Larry Limbo and Paul Hausman are standing aside discussing it between each other. In any case, I can tell you right now, these officials would love to have a replay of the play. Would you let them watch your monitor if they wanted to take a look sure. at it? Sure. And Larry Limbo, did he, in other words, did he call the foul before Doherty was going up for the shot. There's no question it was an intentional foul because you had a case. You had the case where she he just wrapped his arms around Doherty. That's not a normal defensive play. We'll see it again. Okay, here's the play that the officials would love to have at their disposal. Sheehy down the left-hand corner. Now you see he just grabbing him right here. That's not defense. The shot goes up. Now, Larry Limbo, the shot goes in. It has got to be 
intentional foul. Now, there's where Sheehy went over and tried to pat Doherty, but that Doherty at that point doesn't know exactly what Sheehy's intentions are, I'm sure. Well, Billy, from that angle, uh, the basket shouldn't have counted. Well, I, think he was in the, I think he was in the act of shooting. I mean, she, it depends on when the foul's called. Now, what Larry Limbo, I think, is saying is that he called the whistle. He blew the whistle before Doherty was going up for the shot. In any case, it's got to be intentional because he was wrapping his arms around a man. So, in other words, if that's the way they call it, Carolina should get two shots plus possession of the ball. No, no, not, not if it was an intentional foul. If he says... If he says that it was intentional before he took the shot, okay, got then you. he wasn't in the act right, of shooting, right. and they should just get two shots. If, however, it was intentional in the act of shooting, they should get the basket and two shots, not the ball out of bounds. Now we're going to see what the call is going to unfold in front of our eyes. The score is 51-50 at the moment. Which means, Marty, that they did not count the basket. Right. Okay, so... If they give him two shots, what Larry Limbo, the official, is saying, I blew the whistle before Doherty was in the act of shooting. Giving Doherty just two, two shots, no possession. Well, they've called a technical foul. No, they're going to call two shots, okay. an intentional foul. Doherty shoots the two for an intentional foul. North Carolina will not get the ball out of bounds. 12.22, that's the time remaining. After a lengthy argument, Doherty hits now one of two. A technical. They call a technical foul, apparently, on Tom Sheehy. And there, this is the technical free throw shooting now by Kenny Smith. Now North Carolina, since it's a technical, get the ball. get the ball out of bounds. We can be back to one of those multiple-point plays. I never did see a technical signify. Yep, I, I never saw the technical foul call by anybody. But they call the two-shot foul. They put Doherty on the line. They call a technical foul on Sheehy, so Carolina gets the ball. And going back to our original comment about Sheehy, he was exhausted on the play. He just tried to hold his ground by grabbing a hold of Doherty. And no one was ejected from the game, in case you're wondering. Sheehy's out of the lineup, but he is eligible to come back in. He was not thrown out. Wolf shooting for a five-point Carolina lead. It was long, but the ball slapped out to Kenny Smith. From one freshman to another, Madden Alivo. Alivo's the kind of guy who can score big against this defense. He's going to have his jump shot all day long. There it is. Missed it. Wolf tried. Couldn't get it. Followed by Madden. Wolf got it. Polonese cannot afford to get in the middle of those little uh, skirmishes for the basketball. That's why once Kennedy went down, North Carolina had it easy inside. Richard Morgan missed the rebound of his own missed shot and lost it out of bounds. You know, that was about the longest discussion I've seen between officials in quite some time. 55-50. It's the Tar Heels over the Cavaliers after Virginia led by four at halftime. Imagine that technical foul was called that we didn't see when she threw the ball and hit Wolf in the back of the head. Doherty plays to Smith. Now Lebo tries from this side and buries one. Great pass by Kenny Smith. He has scored eight points, all eight of his points, by the way, here in the second half. Jeff Lebo. And it's Terry Holland's attempt to give up something that North Carolina does not do that often. The outside shot, Lebo comes in and picks up the slack. Mel Kennedy answers for his club. 57-52, that seven-point lead for the Tar Heels was the biggest enjoyed by either club tonight. And Virginia goes man-to-man -man now. Now's the time to try to get that ball in against Colonies, making him play Doherty. Kenny Smith realizes that. He gets it in there. He saved it, but he took steps. He traveled. He's a good call by Tom Frame. And no basket. Here's what you want a guard to be able to do, to recognize the situation. Kenny Smith realizing it was a man-to-man -man defense, realizing Polonese has four fouls on him, goes right inside. Just like having a coach on the floor. Polonese, no shot there. He gets it out to Morgan, gets it right back, turns, shoots it up, no good. Joe Wolf, Kenny Smith splits two defenders and either Richard or Drew Kennedy or Johnny Johnson got him. One of the two. Johnson got him with the shoulder. Kenny Smith heads up court. He's got sprinter speed. 
And he puts that ball in the floor. How many guys can stay with it? Carolina's in the one and one. And we still have better than 10 minutes remaining to be played here. Smith, an excellent free throw shooter, 81.1%. He's one for one tonight. Sheehy not back in the ball game. He didn't overhear anything. I'm wondering if uh, they let Sheehy go for the night. We were told that nobody was ejected. But I gotta believe if he was eligible to play, he'd be in the lineup right now. You would think so. Okay, that's good enough. We have been informed again. Yes, sir. 59-52, North Carolina. No one was ejected, so Tom C. he can come back, but he is still mysteriously on the Cavalier bench. Here's Mel Kennedy pulling up with a jump shot. Carolina gave it to him in that scattered situation, and he drives it home. Mel Kennedy slashes to that shot as well as anybody around. Inside, Wolf got three. Good pass. 16-point night for Joe Wolf. He's also hauled down nine big rebounds. North Carolina stays in the man-to-man. -man. Wolf banging on Colony. Mel Kennedy tries again, and number 10 of the night for Joe Wolf, but he throws it away. Back comes John Johnson. He's hammered by Wolf and will be on the line. Great job by Johnson to use his body on Wolf. He made Wolf commit once he got him up in the air. Then didn't worry about making the shot as much as he did getting fouled. Johnny Johnson will shoot for Virginia. They are on the short end of a 61 to 54 score as you took a look at a somewhat tired Olden Colonies. Well, Virginia couldn't miss from the free throw line in the first half. Now they're having their problems in the second. This young man had an outstanding all around game 27 days ago in Charlottesville when the Cavaliers beat the Tar Heels. 13 points, five assists, and four steals. But tonight's another night. It's 61 to 55 after Johnson gets one of two. Defensively. There's a pass to a cutting Lebo. Knocked out of bounds. He was stripped of the ball, and apparently Johnson got him full of foul. Good call by the official. Lebo cutting on in there. Johnson reaching for the ball and didn't get anything but Lebo's arm. The Duke Blue Devils, a winner earlier tonight down at Clemson to assure themselves of no worse than a tie for the regular Atlantic Coast Conference regular season championship as you look at Tom Sheehy still playing a waiting game on the Cavalier bench. Now, Jeff Lebo is a great pure shooter, but this year from the foul line, he's only shooting 72%. His technique is the, is the type of technique that you expect him to be a high 85% free throw shooter. Carolina only 9 out of 14 from the free throw line tonight. Their lead goes back to 7 as Lebo honks Johnson and contact offensive foul. But Johnson took the challenge. Lebo showed pretty good foot movement. If Johnson hadn't used his forearm, it would have been a foul on Lebo. So J.J. is going to come out of the Virginia lineup. Derek Sims, a sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, replaces him. And Tom Calloway is back. As both Morgan and Johnson sit down, a fresh pair of guards in now for the Cavaliers. Wolf belly up with Drew Kennedy. Outside of Kenny Smith with exactly nine minutes on the clock. He comes out for the pass, makes it inside, goes baseline, pulls up, no good. Got his own missed shot. Good fake by Doherty. Obviously, Polonies in a tough position. He can't be very aggressive defensively, and Doherty taking advantage of it. Brad Doherty has 14. North Carolina now by 9, 64-55. Here's Andrew Kennedy to the baseline and the jump shot by Derek Sims. Brad Doherty knocks down Tom Calloway. Doherty's third. That Doherty went up so strong. His, his big problem here is he's just too strong on the inside. Knocks Callaway right to the floor. They're both going for the ball. Make that two fouls on Doherty, so he's not in foul trouble. And only 
four team fouls against the Tar Heels, so they've got a couple of wastes before they put Virginia in the bonus. North Carolina in the zone. Eric Sims punches it inside. Polonese hits it. You can almost count on that shot. Yes, sir. 64-57. That's Lebo with Sims all over it. Wolf. Kevin Madden looking. Going to Lebo. There's Kenny Smith pulling the trigger. Doherty. Madden. Ball slapped out of bounds. And it's Virginia ball. There's a case where Doherty was camping in that lane. Very good. It seemed like about 10 seconds he was in there, but I'm sure it was more than three. Timeout, 7.55 remaining. North Carolina in the driver's seat by seven. We'll be back. At the conclusion of tonight's game, join us. We'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Virginia will have the basketball trailing the North Carolina Tar Heels as we look at other finals. Duke, that went over Clemson, 77-69. Maryland, a winner by 11 over Wake Forest, 59-48. And for the Metro Conference, Louisville escapes by two over South Carolina, 65-63. Callaway pulls up and shoots it in the face of Lebo, and Doherty is there. Lead pass Lebo. He goes for the layup. Good job by Lebo to get Polonese on his hip, then make that last second step onto the basket rather than going straight in. 11 points for the freshman from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and all 11 have come here in the second half. Lebo has taken what Virginia gave him, which is the open shots on the wing, an opportunity to break long. Joe Wolf went for the steal. Instead, he picks up his second foul. Pretty big turnaround here in the second half. Virginia not able to get on the line. You can see Wolf using his body, trying to get around in position. Probably uh, made a little bit too risky a move there, trying to go that far to take the ball away from Polonese. Second half rebounding, North Carolina dominating now 11 to 5 over Virginia. They go to Polonese, he draws a convention, and Doherty says no way, but Larry Limbo said yes you did, and that's a third on Carolina's high rise. There they have Polonese surrounded. Madden, Wolf, and Doherty. Doherty comes down on the arm, tries to pull his hand back, and then realizes the official saw it. Touch foul, but it was a foul. So Doherty with three. Warren Martin, who played briefly in the first half and apparently was experiencing problems with that foot that he sprained last Thursday night against Maryland, he went out somewhat early and has never come back. So he played somewhat shorter in terms of time than Dean Smith had expected him to play, saying yesterday he hoped to get 10 to 15 minutes out of it. He got far short of that. And we haven't seen Tom Sheehy move one inch nope. off of that bench since that incident on the other end. So now Virginia will pick him up end line to end line. 66-59 after the two hits by Polonese. Wolf gets it back. Doherty. Smart cross court to Madden, and he gets it over the line. Ooh, there's Wolf. Pat. He had to get up there in a hurry to come up with that ball. North Carolina 59.1% in the second half. Virginia 58.8. And Lebo will get a couple of free ones. Lebo now starting to turn it on as a score. Puts a lot of pressure on that defense with the inside game of Doherty and Wolf, and then you've got a score like Lebo on the outside. You can see coming right off the screen as Lebo, he goes up, gets fouled on the arm. Here comes she back in the game. Fans letting him know about it. Billy, are you surprised that, that uh, Terry Holland kept him on the bench that long? Well, I think Terry Holland's uh, a very good disciplinarian, and I think he sat him on that bench where the game is not as important as attitude. And she, he had to have a little lesson there. Just because he was tired, didn't give him the license to go ahead and, uh, and, and do what he did. Although, and you pointed it out very well, Marty, he was trying to make up to Doherty on, the, on his first instance. 68-59, North Carolina. Well, Virginia got, the Carolina got the lead, and uh, they're being very stubborn. Virginia having a hard time closing that daylight off a little bit. Six and a half minutes remaining as Johnson spins to the lane, plays baseline. Kennedy! 
smart move by Kennedy. He realized it was going to be a little bit of overplay. So he went back door. Good play. 13 points from Mel Kennedy with a big slam. 68-61. Really running your offense now. Man to man for Virginia. Carolina spreads them out. Kenny Smith open. Tom Sheehy gets the rebound for the Virginia Cavaliers, and the fans give it to him. They gave it to him when he came in. They gave it to him that time. Sheehy really laboring, running down court. It looks like that thigh injury that he had in that first half when he dove for the ball is giving him some trouble. Polonese turns and shoots over Doherty. Gets and Sheehy puts it up. No good. Polonese. But Polonese has worked on his shot so well. That follow through is perfect. He's got such a soft touch inside 12 feet. Third straight game in which he's had 20 or more points. 68-63. Virginia now battling back. They trail by nine. They've cut it to five with four in a row. North Carolina has had problems holding on to some leads of late. That traveling call against Lebo. Curtis Hunter will. She he is really limping out there now, Marty. And he's a tough kid, but it looks like it's really giving him some problems. Kevin Madden comes back for the Tar Heels along with Dave Popson. Joe Wolf and Curtis Hunter sit out. Cavaliers trying to cut it to three. Sometimes when your leg is sore like that, then you sit down for an extended period of time. It takes a while to loosen up. And they trade traveling violations. Big turnover for Virginia. When you try to make a comeback like this, you at least try to get a shot off. That is the 15th time that Virginia has turned it over, leading to 14 North Carolina points. Tar Heels have turned it over but 10 times, and Virginia's gotten only four points out of that. Now Sheehy going out again. I guess that leg is really giving him some problems. Callaway sitting down well defensively. Kevin Madden holds it high against Mel Kennedy. Now Dave Popson. He needs some help and finds it in Madden. And he found Lebo. Lebo came off the screen. An excellent pass by Kevin Madden. Now what North Carolina really is doing is inverting. Their big men are playing outside on the perimeter. That leaves the inside open for the guards to do some good cutting. Callaway can't get it to go. Doherty is there for the Tar Heels. Madden's open. Lead pass to Kevin Madden and foul as he took it to the basket. Drew Kennedy got it. If you're open, Kenny Smith will get you the ball. Now there's Lebo going back door. Johnson expecting his man to step out. But see, since the big men are out handling the ball at the top of the key, it leaves the inside wide open for good cutting to the basket. Timeout call. We've got but four minutes and 24 seconds remaining here as the Tar Heels lead Virginia by seven. 70-63 will return. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Mazda and by Holly Farr. North Carolina leading by seven. There's a sad but true tale for the respective players on the two clubs. Olin Polonies leads a parade, but a boatload of players with three personal fouls on each club. Well, particularly in the early part of this ball game, the game was a little rough. And that's where Polonies picked up his foul problems. Lebo, of course, picked up three quick ones in the first half. Played very well here in the second half. On the free throw line for North Carolina will be Kevin Madden, but not before Richard Morgan checks back in for junior Tom Calloway for Virginia. Madden, of course, one of the most highly recruited players. Committed early to the University of North Carolina. Had some problems in the preseason practice training period and then started to work himself into playing time. It's going to be a very explosive score before he gets out of the University of North Carolina. Five points on the night for Kevin Madden. And the Tar Heels build it back to nine, 72-63. And go zone. Force Virginia to use that 
through time a little bit trying to get off a good shot. It is get up and go time for Virginia. Here's a jumper by Morgan. You talk about a, a freshman that's going to be a, a scoring threat. Morgan's a guy that looks like he has the ability to be a big scorer also. I don't think the Tar Heels will feel too secure with that nine-point lead. They led Maryland by nine with two seconds less than three minutes to go last Thursday night and lost in overtime, and they turn it over. Again, losing your dribble in a double-team situation really is costly. You have to sense that they're going to double-team. Now, he has no dribble left. So he tries to penetrate through two people. Virginia, very wisely, doesn't reach for the ball. And that is a fourth foul on Joe Wolf, Mel Kennedy, Brad Doherty. Had a chance for the fast break. Good job by Virginia getting back. Well, Virginia stays on the short end of the 72-65 score. Three and a half minutes to go. Again, North Carolina playing their big men outside. Doherty and Wolf allows good cutting inside by the guards. Carolina will trigger again. But for Kenny Smith and Jeff Lebo particularly, be going back door on the men that are playing. Lebo finally seeks out Joe Wolf. He's belly up with Drew Kennedy, and there's a poor pass picked off by Mel Kennedy, but he was standing on the sideline as he broke up the floor. A good hustle by Mel Kennedy. He just couldn't keep his balance, and he realized that uh, he was out of bounds. Wolf handling the ball outside. Kennedy breaks in. Good piece of officiating here. The official right on it, and there's where Kennedy stepped out of bounds. And it looks like Terry Allen will start playing offense defense. He's taken Mel Kennedy out and replaced him with Derek Sim. Trying to get a little bit more speed out there to overplay. Carolina had a chance to get a double team on Lebo. North Carolina running some time off, or are they? Dark. Nice scoop shot by Brad Doherty. 16 points for Doherty, 74-65. Morgan, after getting that long cross-court pass, misses. Doherty peels it off. Lead pass from Lebo to Madden. He got it. And how about that shot? A spinning shot off the glass, and it falls for Kevin Madden. Now, we talked about being an explosive score. You can see with his power, he took the ball right into the teeth of the defense. Drew Kennedy snakes one through for Virginia. Virginia not backing off. But the clock is their opponent right now. Backcourt foul against Johnny Johnson. Kenny Smith will be up there for a couple. Good head pass. Hit a head pass by Lebo. And here's Madden taking it right into the defense. The ball will go up. Slapped on the boards, but it sneaks its way in. Curtis Hunter back in the game. Madden, Madden sits, Madden sits down. down. Yeah, he did a good job while he was in there. They got good play tonight. The Tar Heels did from both of their freshmen, Jeff Lebo and Kevin Madden. Lebo's still in the lineup, of course. Lebo has been in the starting lineup some. Good job by Doherty on the tap back. And a good tip by Kenny Smith. The shot clock recycles, and the Tar Heels have some more time to knock off. 210 remaining, 76-67. There's Hunter picking up his dribble again, and he gets in a lot of trouble. Notice how Kenny Smith does not pick up the dribble until he has to. Richard Morgan with a blocking foul, and Kenny Smith goes right back to the free throw line. Smith just an excellent basketball player. First place. team All-American candidate next year. I, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, uh, talking about all this, all that, uh, looking at the top five scores in the ACC, we're probably looking at the All-ACC team. Lenny Bias, Brad Doherty, Johnny Dawkins, Mark Allery, and Mark Price. Not a bad All-Conference team, and it just so happens, and I don't know when the last time that situation took place, that probably the guys that are going to be first team All-Conference are also the top five scores in the league. You're right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I worked long and hard on that, Marty. You read well. <laughs> and you know, coming right behind that, you know who the next two guys are? Mr. Washburn. Washburn and Polonies. Yeah. <laughs> and can you imagine leaving two players of that caliber off an all-conference? Amazing.
78-67. North Carolina is going to break this modest two-game losing streak. The jump shot on the way by Drew Kennedy in and out. The tip by Polonese. It was a while when it didn't go, but it's academic because Joe Wolf fouled him. And you can see how Polonese has had to play under wraps. Now, of course, he doesn't at this point in the game. But by not having him uh, available, full blast, it really hurt Virginia here in the second half. That is a fifth personal foul by our counts against Joe Wolf. Dean Smith thinks so. He's got Curtis Hunter back up. So Wolf fouls out. An excellent night. 16 points and 10 rebounds. Very solid ball player. Curtis Hunter, as we mentioned, will replace Wolf. Notice how the crowd has quieted down. They did a good job when North Carolina needed them, but they're quiet now, sitting back, probably thinking about what's coming up on Sunday. And that game will be that game will be for the marbles. Of course, a big game tomorrow night in the conference. Right. Uh, in regard to momentum, North Carolina State that's had the Super Sundays here of late, beating Louisville, Kentucky, and of course North Carolina last week. A team that is extremely dangerous against anybody in the nation. Jimmy Valvano has really brought that club along. He sure has. And, uh, you know, that game uh, was also pivotal for them in the fact that they had a three-game losing streak and they had such tough games to play the rest of the way. They could have gone into uh, NCAA tournament time with a, right. with a big, big losing streak and turned it around last weekend. And, of course, to go down to Georgia Tech is no easy place to play. And for Tech, they've got to keep rolling. Yep. Kennedy hits one, and Kennedy hits another one. And Virginia will utilize a quick timeout with a minute and 48 seconds to go. The two successes by Drew Kennedy gets his club a bit closer, but Virginia's task, very difficult. 148 to go, Tar Heels 78, Cavs 69. We'll be back. Only one minute and 48 seconds to go. The Tar Heels, they have to feel a bit comfortable, leading as they are 78-69 over Virginia. And if Carolina wins it, they will go 10 and 3 in the Atlantic Coast Conference, setting up, as Billy mentioned a moment ago, that Titanic meeting on Sunday at Cameron Indoor Stadium against Duke. And the Cavaliers will be 7 and 6 in the conference with a game remaining, and that'll be Saturday up at Cole Fieldhouse against lefties Maryland Terrapins. And there won't be any noise coming from that Cameron Indoor Stadium when they play. None. I mean, it will be one of the great crowds of all time. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at the last day for uh, some great seniors in Duke history and a game that means an awful lot. Inbounds, Carolina gets it in. Doherty Smith, now Lebo. And a school that's got one of the great crowds in the country. Boy, that's a truth. Foul is called. Kevin Madden will be up there to shoot. Tom Callaway commits a personal foul, his third. Dave Popson will come for Carolina. And he will replace Curtis Hunter. You know, Popson's an interesting story. I remember coming out of high school, I had fellows who had seen him play on the high school level. Some said, this is a fellow going to make the Olympic team, right? Out of, you know, and, and uh, I thought, boy, he must be some kind of forward. He just has not developed into what everybody expected him to be. Why? I, I don't really know. Um, he just doesn't seem comfortable on the court. It, it, it's hard. I don't see him play every day in practice, so I'm really not the guy to ask that question. But uh, he certainly came in with credentials that people expected him to be of all-American caliber. They're talking the same breath as a Bobby Jones type. Far better than, uh, than Joe Wolf had, and they both came here at the same time. Here's a rejection by Kevin Madden. Talk about his jumping ability. And do they call goaltending against him? They get Madden for goaltending. Polonese want to know why he didn't get also picked up for a foul on the inside. 22-point night for Olden Polonese. 78-71, a minute 29 to go. Brad Doherty waiting to get it from Tom Frame. He does, he looks, he looks again, and he plays it over to Kevin Madden. No sense trying to make a tough play here. Foul call. Callaway, one and one coming for Hunter. Well, and if you're Virginia... Down seven, you've got an opportunity to turn things around. I mean, you've seen some stranger things happen. If you're North Carolina, what you don't want to do is get fouled. You want this clock to keep moving. Callaway leaves. Mel Kennedy is back. And Curtis Hunter will shoot. He's 0 for 2. He's missed his only two free throw attempts. And you know, you mentioned the Duke-Carolina 
final game. There have been so many great Carolina Duke games the last game of the season. I think that the year that Duke had the game won and Bobby Jones intercepted the pass for the layup. And, the, and although it wasn't, I believe, the last game of the year when Duke had that big lead with 18 seconds to go and lost the ball game. Shot misses. Carolina gets a rebound. Kenny Smith will take it himself. 15 points for Kenny Smith. 80 to 71. Virginia threw a scare into him, I'll tell you that. Yep, exclamation point there. Oh, Virginia's going to be a factor, not only in the ACC tournament, but I think it's pretty well assured that they'll be in the NCAA tournament, and I don't think there'll be many people want to play against them. Virginia utilizes another timeout with only 48 seconds to go, and the Tar Heels leading by seven. Back after this from Natural Life. Looking into the Virginia huddle with only 48 seconds remaining and North Carolina trying to even up the season series against Terry Holland's Cavaliers in a game apiece. Virginia led the whole first half. North Carolina got the lead early in the second half and uh, they've never relinquished it. Here's what's coming up on Saturday. The ACC Sports Center with your host Paul Cameron. Cole Fieldhouse at College Park. That starts at 1 o'clock. Followed by Virginia and the Terrapins at 1.30. And Sunday afternoon, it'll be Clemson against Georgia Tech. Starting time at 3.30 on most of these ACC network stations. Inbounded to Madden. And contacted midcourt, Andrew Kennedy, the perpetrator. And it'll be Kevin Madden back up there. You can see how strong Kevin Madden was. He just turned and headed north on that particular play. And Kennedy couldn't get over there in time. And Madden's... Uh, Really got a powerful body, big upper legs. He's got that quick first step. And then he has the soft shot, so that's a pretty good combination. Well, we'll see what kind of soft shot he has right here. He scored eight points. Short, way short. Now, Carolina's missed a number of free throws at a point in time when they could have iced this game. John Johnson drills one, and John Johnson also called for the foul. He just knocked Jeff Lebo down, and Tom Frame on top of it and called it. Oh, no, that's got to be a two-shot foul. That has got to be a two-shot intentional foul. He pulled Lebo right over. Now, that's, now, if that's right. not a two-shot foul, there's never been one. No question. Yeah, I, I don't understand why officials are, are, are making that such a difficult call. If a man is trying to play basketball defensively or offensively, then that's one, that's one thing. But when a man grabs a man by the shoulder, throws him to the floor, that is an intentional foul. Well, it didn't seem to be any way it could have been, in, been interpreted otherwise, but apparently it was. <laughs> But well, he certainly wrapped his right arm just under his neck and just peeled him over. There's no question about it. As a matter of fact, you know, you start talking about what causes both injuries and fights. Uh, you know, there's no place in basketball for that kind of play. And if you're if you're Jeff Lebo, you know, you have a tendency to want to go ahead and say, hey, wait a second. Right. You know, I, I'll go ahead and throw a fist through your face. I mean, th that's that's the basic attitude of a ball player that has something like that happen to him. Now you see the play here again. Johnson's going to grab him right by the back and throw him to the floor. Now, if that is not an intentional foul, what else can one do? Lebo hits both shots, 82-75, 35-34, 33 seconds remaining. Mel Kennedy with a jump shot. He hits. Oh. And there goes Madden again. Too he'll late for the it. pass. And he'll oh. make it. That's the second time tonight a ball same has been set. Almost the same play. No foul call. Dean Smith can't believe it on the sideline. 84-77. You know, this has been such a good ball game on the part of both of these ball clubs. There's no sense for it to get ratty right now and have some bad incident take place. Well, Carolina commits a foul that stops the clock with 17 to go. Popson, his first of the night, and Olden will go to the free throw line. Dean Smith visiting with Curtis Hunter. It's amazing this thing has been at seven to five points here for a long time. Yeah, we'll be there. The Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Quarterfinals coming up a week from Friday. 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Live, we'll have it all for you from the Greensboro Coliseum. You'll be there, won't you? We'll be there. Could you imagine 
1974 and earlier that only one team from a given conference went into the NCAA play. Could you imagine the pressure on the clubs this year when you have, I think there'll be six ACC teams that'll go to the NCAA tournament, but back in those days, only one team advanced and the ACC didn't recognize the NIT right. either, so it would be one and done. You talk about pressure. Is this, what is this, your 112th Atlantic Coast Conference tournament? Game. <laughs> Not tournament. My first one was 19, I guess, 59, 50, 60. Yeah. Right, 1960. Carolina ball after the two hits by Polonies. Darty was 17 seconds, and he gets it in just barely. And Hunter fouled, and they called. <laughs> They're calling that at two I know, and they, they didn't call the one uh, involving John Johnson. Well, a man was reaching for the ball. Now we watch this play. Doherty gets the pass off. Now to me, that that was a case where Kennedy was reaching for the ball, which is a defensive play. He didn't get the ball, but he was at least reaching for the ball. He wasn't grabbing the man. He wasn't trying to go ahead and commit a foul with no regard to playing normal defense. To me, how does that one a two-shot foul? John Johnson made no pretense of going for anything but uh, the neck of Jeff Lebo. I'll tell you, Curtis Hunter has not made a free throw tonight. He's 0 for 4, and he's missed badly on some of them. Well, for Curtis, it may just be a matter of confidence. Good free throw shooter, almost 77% on the right. year. He got it. 85-79. Carolina will drop back. Now Lebo comes into the backcourt. Dean Smith says something to him, and the ball goes midcourt to Derek Sims. He wastes no time putting up an air ball that goes out of bounds with 11 seconds to go. Ball out of bounds. Virginia just trying to do anything they can, of course, to stop the clock, but not much chance, obviously, to overcome that type of a six-point. Clock deficit. under 10. Doherty just flings it up the floor to Madden, and he will back it out of there, and that's it. North Carolina gets the lead in the second half and never looks back, although Virginia rallied a couple of times, could not overcome it. Final score here at Chapel Hill.